What's going on traders? John with Tactical Trading here. Uh, we're going to do a little video on the week in review and what a week it was. Um, had some winners, had some losers, but because I play by my number one rule, cut losses quickly, my losses or my gains were a lot more than my losses this week. Um, and that's why I stress that to you guys. When a trade goes against you, now if you're investing, I guess that really doesn't matter. Uh, if you're holding for the long term, you kind of just put it away and, you know, kind of peek at it every once in a while um because but i can't do that um you know i i have a small investing account small one um you know i have a few stocks in there and it, it kills me to watch the pullbacks because tr you know i'm naturally just a trader um but man this week brought back the momentum as i mentioned uh, just yesterday the momentum's back in the small cap world um Historically, October is the month that brings back the traders. Uh, October, November, December, and January are typically the hottest months of the year. So everyone needs to sharpen their knives, sharpen their tools, get ready and dig in. Uh, you know, dig your cleats in and uh, get ready because we are about to get some action. Now, I don't know if we're going to see action like last week, you know, right away. But I have a feeling we're going to see that summer action coming up October, November, December, and January. <laughs> Maybe the only lull coming between, obviously, Christmas and New Year's. But uh, this week, like I said, I had some winners, had some losers. Uh, I held ONTX uh, from last Friday over the weekend. Um, I got in at $0.30, cents, uh, got out at uh, $0.37.5, cents, so had a really nice trade on that one. Um, and then I tried to trade it again on the pullback, got back in at 32 uh, on the pullback, and had to get out at $0.30. Cents. Um, so I had a short little loss on that one. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say a little loss, but, uh, you know, the, the gain was much bigger than the loss on that one, and I held that a little longer than I wanted to. Um, I actually held it through $0.30. Cents. It came back to 30 and I just got out. Um, on, and that was my tr only trade on Monday. Uh, so I held uh, ONTX overnight uh, from Friday, uh, sold it in, in the morning, and uh, then uh, happened to buy it a little bit later in the day and uh, had my loss uh, that day. Uh, Tuesday, I traded OPTI, uh, got in at 0.329, and uh, held that one overnight. Um, so that one wasn't a day trade. Uh, held that one uh, overnight and ended up getting out at 0.327. Uh, so that was a little loss plus commission on that because I trade that in my TD Ameritrade account, and uh, there's a $7 charge to get in and 7 to get out, so lost 14 there, plus a, a, you know uh, only uh, two-tenths of a penny uh, on that trade, but uh, saw the momentum going against me. Also on Tuesday had a really nice trade on uh, DSGT, got in at six cents or a shade over six cents, it was 0 0.061, and uh, got out at 12 cents, so doubled on that one. Uh, that was a heck of a trade on DSGT, one of my favorite little uh, penny OTC penny stocks, uh, and we'll be talking about that one a little later. Um, and that, like I said, that with that and uh, OPTI are my only trades on uh, Tuesday. Uh, held OPTI overnight, obviously, sold it into Wednesday morning. Uh, then Wednesday morning, uh, got into NMTR. Uh, they had some good news Wednesday morning. I got in at 80 cents, ended up uh, going against me. Uh, actually, it went all the way up to 88 cents where I was about to take my profits, but it just collapsed afterwards, kind of kicking myself for not taking that 8 cents there because that would have been a nice little game, a really nice game, and ended up cutting that for a loss at point. 795 um and wednesday obviously was the day that we had spi so i was sitting there just prior to getting an nmtr i watched spi go up to four break down to the uh, 330s or three four three thirties or three forties where i was ready to get in and i just didn't do it i didn't pull the trigger and watch that little piece of garbage go all the way up to 46 dollars without me i know that happened a little later in the day um and as, uh, as SPI was running, I had my eye on Sunworks um, because I did mention Sunworks on our, uh, because you know, like I said, on uh, last Friday and last uh, Sunday, I really liked the solar sector. I was anticipating the solar sector heating up. SPI being a solar stock, I thought, hey, this is a sympathy play. So I got into Sunworks. I made three trades on Sunworks. Ended up getting in Sunworks at 83 cents. 
selling out at a dollar as the dollar rejected. As it hit a dollar again and started to reject, I, I ended up just getting out when it hit a dollar. I figured the dollar was going to be resistance because it hit a dollar a couple times, went to 101, and then pulled under a dollar. So when it hit a dollar again and rejected, I got put in my sell order at a dollar and got out there for a you know, decent little gain there. Um, then it broke through a dollar. Uh, pretty, ha pretty hard it broke through a dollar. And I ended up getting in at a dollar ten and uh, rode that sucker all the way up to three bucks. Uh, at the second halt. Um, was going to get out at the first halt because it was shot away up into the 180s and then pulled back into the 150s where I was like, oh man, this is going to go against me here. And then I saw the momentum just come back in. It halted and then I got out after the second halt at $3. Um, it went all the way up to 485 after that, but you know, what are you going to do? I took my profits. I mean, I over doubled my money, almost tripled my money on that one. So that was one heck of a trade. Um, then I ha uh, what I did was I ended up buying uh, Sunworks at the end of the after hours at a dollar thirty three and then woke up the next morning <laughs> woke up the next morning and it was eight dollars nothing I can do about that because I like I said I trade in TD Ameritrade and you cannot trade prior to six a.m. now mind you I'm Central Time you cannot trade before six a.m. Central so I watched that thing go all the way up to eight dollars pulling my hair out wanting to sell this thing but I couldn't so. As soon as it, as soon as 6 a.m. hit, I sold and ended up selling at about 5:25. And it wasn't. It was, I think I waited about two or three minutes because I figured, hey, is this thing gonna go up? Sometimes at 6 a.m. you get some buyers coming in, and but no, this thing cracked at uh, six o'clock and I ended up selling at five dollars and 25 cents I could have held it later on because this thing then proceeded to go up to eight dollars, but I I didn't have anything to do with that. But um, that was. Uh, Probably with some works, two of the better trades I've had in a long time. Um, along with that DSGT trade, was really nice too. So, um, some really nice trades right there. I mean, you, you can't you can't get better than that. And I typically don't hold for those type of wins. So, uh, you know, kind of pat myself on the back for for kind of biting because well, usually when I get to buy, when I get twenty percent profit, I'm I'm bailing, you know, grabbing my bag and running. Um, but th this this action didn't even allow me to do that because it was moving so quickly. So, um, you know, so that was on Wednesday. Um, and again, Thursday morning was the, uh, where it went up to 525. I sold it on Thursday morning. And then uh, Thursday, uh, I ended up uh, trading DSGT again. Uh, got in at 12 cents, got out at 17.4 cents. So another great trade on DSGT. Uh, and then it came down once it hit 18 and a half. I thought this thing was going to start skyrocketing. I was going to buy it again. But then I saw the pullback right at 18 and a half. And then this thing slowly grinded down. I thought it was done grinding at, uh, you know, at about 13 and a half cents. I got back in and then ended up uh, holding it overnight. And uh, should have sold it right on the open because it shot up on the open to 13 cents this morning. And I ended up getting out at 11 and a half cents when it pulled back. Uh, and uh, DSGT, I actually got back in at 10 cents at the end of the day today. And I'm holding that over the weekend. Uh, and then had one more trade uh, overnight on Thursday. Uh, I bought CBAT. I got it in that in the after hours at $1.85 and uh, sold it at two forty in the after hours. So uh, probably should have held it. I was thinking about holding it overnight, but I had that profit and I took it. Um, so, you know, really nice week. What a one heck of a week. Um, and today I didn't make any trades. I just uh, bought that DSGT for over the weekend. Um, I mean, I was just kind of exhausted and just watched the markets. Um, and, and kind of when you have a, one of your best weeks, you really don't want to make trades when you're not really sure you're, you haven't really planted in and make any mistakes and give the market back what you took from it. Um, you just never want to do that. So I kind of took today off and kind of took a flyer on DSGT, which is not typically what I do. I saw no real pattern set up. I saw a lot of strength on the, uh, on the close on DSGT and we will be talking about DSGT tomorrow and OTC Saturday. Um, that's it's, it's a little company I really like, and uh, I think this thing could test those highs of $0.27 cents sometime in the near future. Um, going into next week, um, we're gonna, first I'm going to talk about the stock that kicked everything off, and that's SPI. Um, what can you say? Um, this company went from $1.04 to $46.67. I did not trade it at all. Um, 
you know, kind of kicking myself with that, but there's a reason I didn't trade this stock. Um, this stock had $97 million in revenues and had nothing to show for it. They have, they've had nothing but losses annually going back years. And it's basically a shell company. A Chinese, it's a Chinese company that has a shell company that's ran out of uh, the Cayman Islands. Um, this company has no prototype for their electric vehicle. Um, they have no technology for an electric vehicle. There is no electric vehicle. They have no capital. They have no capital to make an electric vehicle or to put into this EV sec, you know, that they're talking. They know nothing. Um, and this stock, like I said, this little POS went from a dollar four all the way to forty six sixty seven, and then collapsed down into the thirteens. The following day, shot back up, I think, to twenty five or twenty six. I, I didn't want anything to do with it, and uh, now it's trading around ten dollars. I typically don't short stocks. I'm not a short trader. I'm a long trader. Um, shorting to me is way too risky. Um, it, you know, at least when you're long a stock, you can you can cap your you know you cap your losses. You know what your risk is, um, and it, all a stock can do is go to zero. Um, shorting a stock, there's infinite lo you know infinity to loss. I mean, there there is no cap to your losses. This thing can shoot up, and you can have something like. Um, you know, uh, has something like this happen to you? Uh, how many people shorted uh, SPI at seven dollars, eight dollars, twelve dollars, ten dollars, twenty four dollars, twenty three dollars? You know what I mean? And had to cut their losses up in the forties, thirties, and forties, and just just ate it. I would imagine there's a lot of traders because. Short that that had a lot to do with short squeeze too. It's a low flow stock, and there was a lot of short squeezing going on, squeezing them like lemons, and um, you know helping that thing just uh, skyrocket. That was a huge short squeeze, and I would have not, you know, really like to be on the end of that short squeeze. Um, it makes me kind of nervous, but here at uh, about ten dollars, I really like shorting this thing. Please keep in mind, I am not a financial advisor. I am not giving you advice or trade advice. I'm letting you know my perspective on the market. And I think this thing is going to go back down to $2, $3 maybe. Um, this, is a, <laughs> this is a perfect short. Um, I would like to get in right in this $10 range to short it. If it shoots up to $13, $14, you know, it maybe uh, double down and short a little more. Um, which goes against everything that I, you know, that I had, you know, everything that I use as a trader, all my knowledge and all my, um, you know, all my rules that I put in place as a trader. Um, but I see this stock just, it's garbage. And I do not see this thing staying up at this $10 range very long. Um, the thing that scares me is that this thing has shown the elasticity to run. And it has just, I mean, like I said, it exploded. So that makes me nervous. Am I going to short this thing? I don't know. It's something I got to ponder over the weekend. But uh, that was definitely what I was thinking about at the end of the day today. And instead, I took the DSGT trade. I was really seriously thinking about just shorting this thing and you know, seeing where it goes, because I think this thing, who knows, I mean, j just a, a couple months ago, these guys got a delisting notice from the NASDAQ, uh, because they didn't help hold the, uh, you know, the, the qualification to be a NASDAQ stock, because they couldn't hold their stock over a dollar, so, um, that's what I think about SPI, um, going into next week, I, I like, uh, I still like the same stocks, I like CBAT, P-O-L-A, uh, S-U-N-W, um, you know, I, I like these trades going into next week. I like SOL. Um, like I said, uh, SOL, that was a stock I talked about on uh, Friday and on Sunday. And um, this is a stock that shot all the way up almost to $5 uh, in that run. And um, like I said, last uh, last Friday I mentioned that they had that uh, analyst that came out and gave them a $4 rating or a $4 price target. And that stock popped up went up to went up to about 485 and then they did an offering threw a threw a wet blanket on that fire and just snuffed it out and then that stock just came down while all the other solar stocks were just skyrocketing this is a, a lower float you know low priced solar play I, it, I don't think they anticipated that you know pop I don't think they anticipated it. I said at ah, 45 put the offer out let's get that money um, I think that stock could have went to twenty dollars. That's my opinion. I think it could have went to twenty, twenty-five. Who knows? Um, but they 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 killed it. But um, 
traders tend to forget. Okay, once the once that uh, you know once that offering closes and you know, you know the bad feeling and the harsh feelings go away and they're forgiven. Uh, it overall it's still a good company. It's still in a good sector. Um, you know it, the floats a little more now because they put that offering out. But I still like SOL uh, going into the future. Again, I still like SUNW going into the future. Uh, I still like POLA going into the future. I still like CBAT. I still like these companies. Um, now that they've popped, they've shown they can pop. Um, the market's getting hotter. People may turn to these plays. Uh, right now, obviously, the EV sector, alternative energies, batteries, mining, um, these are the plays that people are going to be looking at until until there's a shift and another sector moves in. Um, the EV sector has been hot for months now, and I don't think it's going anywhere. We still have probably 5, 10, maybe even 15 years before this uh, electric vehicle sector takes in saturation in the market. Um, you know, there's still billions of... Uh, gasoline vehicles out there you know combustion vehicles um, and on that note there's a stock I will be talking about on OTC Saturday um, that will be talking about that but um, and I think can take advantage of that part of the market uh, kind of cleaning up the uh, the com you know the combustion engines and cleaning up the fuel with those engines um, you know and the emissions um, so keep an eye out for that tomorrow in OTC Saturday um, but uh, I still think these sectors are hot. I still think they're gonna they're still gonna move. I think that you know the dynamics are right right now. You've got traders coming back in the market. You've got some flame getting lit underneath the market. You still have these sectors that are hot. Um, I still think we may get a little bit of a shift into the healthcare sector, um, but hey, you know uh, it is what it is. A couple other stocks I'm gonna be looking at over the next two weeks. Uh, GEVO. I definitely be watching that stock. Keep an eye on GEVO. Uh, CPSH. CPSH. Keep an eye on that stock. Uh, I think there's some. Uh, there could be some momentum going into those plays. Um, JE Just Energy. I think you know. I, I'm not a big fan of it, but um, I think that stock has shown it can move and. You know, there, uh, I think a couple months back, that stock shot up all the way in, into the 120, 130 range uh, from where it's at now, a little lower than where it's at now. So that stock can still, that stock can move. Um, so I think that these uh, <laughs> these, these CEOs and these people in, in the, uh, you know, the, the relations departments for these companies are, they're drafting up their PRs, they're, they're writing their press releases to start flinging out some press releases to get some of these other stocks moving. So again, you want to keep your eye on the EV sector, you want to keep your eye on the um, the alternative energy sector and the solar sector, you want to keep your eye on the battery, anybody who makes batteries or anything with to do with batteries and mining companies. Those are the sectors that you want to keep an eye on. Um, I think I had something else I wanted to bring, but I can't really think of it. Uh, kind of going off the, the top of the wig here on this one. Um, oh, uh, another stock I'm, I, I really like going you know down the line and probably for, and I, I would suggest, I mean, like I said, I'm not giving any advice here. I'm going to be buying this stock to hold maybe for the next month or two is ONTX. Um, I really like that stock. I really like what they've got in the pipeline. Um, I really think, uh, what is it, what is that that they have in the pipe? They're looking at getting some funding from the government for their election infection um, treatment that they've got going on. Um, and uh, what is that? That's the... Uh, it's that plasma, that plasma treatment that the president talked about not too long ago. Uh, they're involved with that, and uh, they also have a lot of, uh, you know, good cancer treatments that are still in the pipeline. Um, they, they still have that huge gap to fill, um, you know, all the way up to a dollar from where they're at now. Um, I know it's a little bit of a higher float stock, but, uh, you know, it saw some momentum last week. I think the momentum could come back into this, so I really like ONTX as well, too. But, again, I'm going to make a watch list for you guys on Sunday. Keep an eye out tomorrow for OTC Saturday. Um, just wanted to give you a little bit of a week in review, the week that it was, and... Um, you know, just give you a few stocks to eyeball. Uh, do your homework over the weekend. Everyone take the weekend as a time to go through the market, scour through the markets, write down every stock, or, or, you know, that, that's been up during the week. Look at why they've been up. You know, see why they've been up and what catalyst has ignited them. This way you know when you see something similar in the future, you could take advantage of it because the markets are getting hot.
And as always, please like, please share, please subscribe. I know we're close to about 750 subs now. I want to thank everybody for that. If you've got any questions, please put them in the comment section below. Uh, any stocks you want me to take a look at, put them in the comment section below. I'll do my best to make sure I take a look and see if I can get back to everybody. And uh, again, you guys have a blessed weekend, and let's get that money, traders.